my moves like my ABC. Selective realism. Suffering, violence and war in first and third person shooters. Or at least what that title from Diagra Talks inspires in me. Video games are normally played for the rush, and first and third person shooters are definitely at the forefront of that. They're not really the place, so much, in their current form to deal with many deep or emotional issues. At least not in the gameplay elements, there, there are exceptions. The culture around these kind of games is one aspect of this, the mechanics another. First person shooter games have always been about the rush of immersive action, and those first person games that eschew that are so far outside that paradigm that they get derided as walking simulators and similar. First person places you in the action, but there's little to no sense of your own body, which renders it somewhat alienating and surreal, albeit subtly. On an interesting side note, they found that adding a virtual nose to VR simulations helps allay motion sickness and vertigo suffered by some players. Perhaps more visual cues to body position and reality could increase immersion in FPS games in the same way. It's something to think about. Third person shooters more deliberately remove you from the action. It's more obvious and spelled out that you're steering somebody else and experience and directing their actions that have removed, experiencing their story rather than making your own. This is shared in literary first to third person perspectives. I walked across the room versus he walked across the room. Save that even in the third person view in games, we are taking some extent of control. Now what has been really interesting from a design point of view has been the reported reactions to the shift in GTA 5 from third person view to an optional first person view. People have reported that the violence feels much more affecting in first person view in a way that they haven't reported in third person view, or in first person shooters themselves, interestingly. The comparison of the two experiences seems to have had a much more powerful effect than either experience on its own. What could that mean for design? Well, that's hard to tell. A game that shifts between third and first person view could, perhaps, use that to increase the emotional impact of its content. Perhaps you could have a protagonist who is a traumatised war veteran with flashbacks in third person view and actions in the here and now in first person view. That could be interesting. Another option might be where you play through a level once as one character and play through it again as that character's partner, experiencing your own actions from both the first hand view and second hand view. That aside, the reason we don't fixate on the suffering and violence etc in these kind of games is actually fairly obvious. They're recreational pastimes, ways of blowing off steam. We're not generally in it to have our heartstrings tugged or to feel empathy for the legions of Nazis that we're gunning down. Any more than we would have empathy for a punching bag. It's about stress relief and excitement and overcoming challenges, safely indulging these violent urges in a way that harms nobody advancing the story through accomplishment, overcoming the odds. Frankly, it's simply not about suffering. Could we use games to tell a darker, grittier, nastier tale of war? Could we create moments like facing down the child sniper in Full Metal Jacket, or the gratuitously shocking meat grinder of Saving Private Ryan or Hamburger Hill? Perhaps. But players are unpredictable creatures, and we would have to steel ourselves for them not picking up on the cues, or not being shocked or affected in the way we would want. Some would shoot the little girl sniper without hesitation, partly because it's, it's just a game, and gamers are aware of that. We can't control their actions in the way Kubrick could control Jokers, nor should we want to. Nor should we want to control the actions of other creators to ensure that they create according to our vision. That's always the danger here. These elements all have their place in storytelling. But we don't want to make it compulsory. We don't want to insist on their importance for everybody at all times and all places. Upbraiding games that don't include them makes us risk having less diversity and losing the impact of the games that do break that mould. That's not good for players or designers at all. <laughs>